everyone. What's Welcome happening? to Mosin with the Maylies. I'm Denica. And I'm Josh. And today we put together a little list of kind of the 10 or 15 things uh, first time RVers are going to need before they even get out onto the road. Of course, someone has to drive by. Because we're right next to the road. Anyway. But anyway. <laughs> so we got, a, we got a couple things here that we wrote down. Um, hopefully this can help out somebody that has never even RV'd before. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you guys are going to need. Here is just a little bit of a, a list that we put together to help, hopefully help some of you guys out. It's a starter list. There'll be some things afterward, right? Another video, but just the top things that you'll need to, when for your first trip. Yeah, because we, we had basically no knowledge when we started a couple years ago it was definitely a learning process we spent a lot of money on just getting stuff that we didn't know that we needed so our first uh, couple camping trips seemed like we were always running to a store or something like that to get that so um, probably the first thing you need so go ahead look up uh, surge protectors there's kind of like the three main brands that we found we have a progressive industries which is an EMS which is an electronic management system um, that's the one that we have there's another one that's just a straight up uh, surge protector and a third one that just came out is from Hughes it's called a watchdog it kind of gets into the Bluetooth basically these, the surge, these surge protectors are going to help save your rig from an electrical spike or probably even a worse an electrical drop um, if it gets below certain voltages that goes in it will actually ruin some of your appliances or AC units so uh, that would be kind of the first thing just as for protection is look at um, a surge protector and what do we pay for ours like uh, you're, you're gonna spend about 300 350 dollars for one of those they are expensive some rigs will actually have them hardwired in so that, make, yeah, check yeah, your rig first. You'll just to see have if you to have check to see not. what you got there. So uh, the second thing, stinky, slinky. So mm. the the hose, like ours, is black. That's so like a slinky hose, I guess. I don't touch she it. She doesn't touch I don't it touch. at all. She doesn't touch it at all. So the stinky slinky, <laughs> stinky slinky is what you're going to need to empty your, your black tanks and gray tanks. Uh, we have 20 foot. Um, we have two 10 footers that hook together. Uh, really, we've never really used 20 foot, but I would definitely go with something like a 15 footer. Uh, Camco has a, a good one out. Um, there, there's a lot of them out there. You can even go uh, to get a Titan at Walmart. They have been um, really good. Uh, have have heard a lot of good things about that. So you can get those at like a camping store or Walmart, like you said. Um, I think the better quality ones are at the camping stores or or online. Online, yeah. You can order all that all that stuff. So, um, but that that would, that's something that you're you're going to need first time out after your tanks fill up black tank uh, even if you're full-time or just go out for the weekends you got to empty that stuff out and that's the only way and to do make it make sure you do it well yeah you kind of see what your your how big your rig is if, if your water connections are up on the front versus the back you're probably going to need 50 foot if your hose connection is in the rear of your rig, which is where most of the water hookups and power hookups are more towards the rear of the, of the rig, uh, you may be able to get by with 25, even uh, you can go a little bit better hose at a 35 footer. Um, just don't use a garden hose. You can use a garden hose. I don't use a garden hose though. Um, you can because they have lead in them don't the, they? yeah yeah get the get the drinking water safe one uh, so you'll, you'll have your garden hose which is everybody has that get the drinking water safe one which is kind of like a lead free uh, way Plus better. they're lighter well they're a little bit lighter weight right yeah so. yeah definitely okay 
Then number four is a filter for the water. Yeah. So a lot of rigs actually come with a filter on them. Like ours already has a filter, but we, we, had a, we, we had have a, an extra one. Yep. So just, just in case, because you never know the quality of the water that's coming from the campground. A lot of campgrounds are really old, and so we're not too sure. So it's better to be safe yep. than sorry. And you can get those either online or you know RV store they're gonna run you can usually get two of them they're about a foot long or so kind of a charcoal filter they're gonna run you uh, tw 25 bucks for two of them somewhere around in that area so that's uh, just kind of a, a little backup and then the next one is a water pressure regulator system so what a wa water regulator will do is you can adjust it down to 40 PSI, 50 PSI, kind of where we have our set, you get a little bit better water pressure, um, but at the same time, it's not enough to actually break your line. I think I'm just like your Vanna White here, because Josh pretty much is in charge of all these things, so. A lot of everything that we're talking about right now is kind of on the outside of the rig. That's, it's just. <laughs> so, I'm just as Vanna White, I'm just reading everything. So he's, he's better at explaining everything. You're better than Vanna White. <laughs> Most of the stuff inside is me, unless something. And we're gonna get to one of those videos anyway. too. Anyway, so. <laughs> so then the next thing is A wide connector? Wide connector, uh, you can hook that to your main line, it's just a splitter. It kind of gives you another little thing to wash your hands outside or you can also hook up another hose just in case somebody has a bunch of plants or anything around, you know, you can give those a little spray, give it a little wash. I do actually use that little thing. Yeah, she uses it a lot. So a, a wide connector is, that way you don't have to disconnect everything. Uh, your main water source going into your, your rig just to fill up a little bucket or anything like that. So a Y connector would be another good thing. And then we have that little baby hose that's yeah. connected to the thing. Yep, just right. a, a little hose about a foot long or so. It just prevents the spray and actually comes out, you know, as a stream. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then um, the next one on the list is tools so like yeah. a basic set of tools I know Josh is gonna go into that in more detail probably in another video but you know like screwdrivers and I think a basic drill or something like that but yeah. um, that way if something breaks you have it on hand if and, yeah, okay something's some, going to break it will something will break even if it's a brand new RV unfortunately sorry <laughs> to break it to you break <laughs> yeah no pun yep. intended but no. um a tip for your tools is keep them on the passenger side so if you have to pull off on the side of the road, you have easy access to them and you don't ha get run over yep. trying to get them. Not in the roadway, definitely. So the next um, Did you want to talk about dog bones or is that yeah. a different Yeah, okay so most rigs, that brand new rigs uh, that have like 3 AC units and they're going to be 50 amp not everywhere that you're going to go is going to be 50 amp you're going to have uh, a lot of the parks are going to be 30 amp especially if they're 50 years old um, so you need dog bones so you can go from a 50 amp which we have you go a dog bone can get it down to 30 amp and then you can actually attach another dog bone which will get you down to that 15 or 20 amp which is how you plug into a house if you're mooch docking. We've done it. We've done it. Yep, it works just perfect. So, hi um, Jeremiah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the dog bones at least get a 30 amp if you have a 50 amp um, rig, because once you pull out there, get all set up, and then you figure it out that you don't have the right dog bone to connect your power you're off to the store so okay and then um, uh, I yeah. think tank chemicals yep, is tank. the next one so uh, we you we use happy camper 
that's we've tried a couple of them happy camper has been working out the best for us um, there's some other geo methods out there uh, you know where you use like borax and some dawn but your actual tank chemicals are going to be uh, TST um, there's actually quite a bit at, at Walmart the best ones that we found are going to be like happy camper you put those in your black tank so it kind of breaks down the solids uh, and also the toilet paper and then you can put those in the guys don't let me Uh, you put those into your black tanks and that breaks down uh, the solids and toilet paper. You put those into the gray tanks, um, which usually stink worse, and they will help with the odor. So They both smell. They both smell. Shower water actually oh, it's gets, nasty. It gets pretty nasty. So get some tank chemicals to kind of help calm the storm. Okay, and then um, leveling blocks no. and chocks, you can, that's kind of together. You put those together. So if you have uh, an automatic leveling system, like a level up or something like that, we still use uh, two by two by twelves underneath um, all the pads, unless we're like on concrete, uh, just kind of, you know, bigger the area, it doesn't sink or, or anything like that. Plus it helps with like rocky, like, because... Yep we found like no matter what you're gonna have like when people are walking around in the rig there's gonna be a little at least a little bit of a wiggle yeah but so that helps with that so the longer you extend your jacks out the more sway that you can have if you can get those jacks to to not be extended out so far then then you know sturdier and then the wheel chocks just you know wheel chocks just just go underneath the wheels and help yeah. it so you don't roll down the hill or especially unhitching or hitching it just gives yeah. you that little extra little extra security there and then okay so there are a bunch of other things on the list um but a couple of them that are together since you're going on your first trip i think gloves and hand sanitizer and lysol yeah. i know that those are kind of on another list but when you're dealing with the stinky slinky and all that and we see a lot of people that will like deal with their stinky slinky and then like rub their face which is really gross so. <laughs> just rubber gloves just, are, are good yeah. and then the Lysol just Josh sprays that on the the valves to just because you know we see how people handle something not not everyone but some people and so it just keeps it Sanitary. Anyway, are you done?